Hello primary 5, welcome to my channel, I'm Miss Sarah, I'm teaching science and today we will continue talking about food chain. As you can see here we have a picture of green plant or grasses and we have a picture of ladybug or beetle and we have frog, snake and hawk or eagle. Can you remember that the green plant considered as producer or consumer producer super? So ladybug eat the grasses. The ladybug eat the producer the grasses. So the ladybug or the beetle consider as first consumer super. And the frog eat the beetle or eat the ladybug. So the frog consider as second consumer super. So the snake eat the frog. So snake is tertiary consumer or third consumer. Tertiary consumer. And the hawk eats the snake, so it also considered as tertiary consumer or fourth consumer. We eat different types of food. So if we imagine those food are connected to our body by lines, this is called web. So when you imagine arrows or lines connected between you and the food, this is called food web. So food web is a model that shows many different feeding relationship among living organisms. So we can find in the food chain different feeding relationship between different organisms. As beetle eats the grass, this is feeding relationship. As the frog eats the beetle, so this is also feeding relationship. So food web it's a model that shows many different feeding relationships between or among living organisms. Also, it is made up of several interconnected food chains. What is the meaning of several interconnected food chains? This means that the food web have many food chains that connected to each other, which show food and energy relationship or flow that passes from one organism to another. So food chain show the food relationship that passes from one organism to another. Also food chain shows the energy relationships that passes from one organism to another. Also primary five food web is formed from the ways in which many food chain interact with the ecosystem. As you can see here we have picture of green plant, picture of snake, picture of mouse, rabbit and an eagle. We can make from those pictures food chains, food chains, mini food chains, and we can make a food web. How? As you can see here, we have green plant or grasses, which consider as producer, and we have mouse and rabbits that eat the green plant, so they consider both of them as first consumer. So the rabbit and the mouse are first consumer. We have here the snake that can eat the mouse and also snake can eat rabbit. So we can consider the snake as secondary consumer. Okay. And also the eagle can eat the mouse and can eat the rabbit. So here we can consider the eagle as second consumer. And also the eagle can eat the snake. So here we can consider the eagle as tertiary consumer. So as you can see here, this is called food web as it shows many different or several interconnected food chains. So food web is a model that describes or shows the energy flow and feeding interaction between living organisms in the ecosystem. So food web is a model that shows or describes the energy flow as we said before in the food chain, the energy flow from one organism to another. So food web, it's a model that describes or shows the energy flow and feeding interaction between living organisms in the ecosystem. If any organism in the ecosystem disappears, that we can't find this organism anymore, the food web in that ecosystem will be affected. How? as some organisms lose their food source. They can't find their food source, so the ecosystem will be affected. So each organism in the ecosystem is important for the food web to continue. 
Why does food web show better interactions among living organisms than a food chain? That's because of the food web shows interactions among many food chains. So the food web contains many organisms, while the food chain shows interactions between just few organisms. So food web is better than the food chain as the food web contains many organisms, while the food chains contain just few organisms. So you can see here, this is called decomposer. This is called decomposer. We have here fungi and we have here mold. This is called decomposers. So now we're going to talk about decomposers primary five. We have here two types of different decomposers. We have first decomposer and second decomposers. The first decomposer, we call them scavengers. Scavengers, they are organisms that feed on or eat dead animals and dead plants and break them down into smaller pieces. So the scavenger feed on dead animals and dead plants and they break them down into smaller pieces. How about the second decomposers? The second decomposer they are organisms that complete the process of decomposition by breaking down the smaller pieces of the remain of the plants and animals. So they complete the work of the scavenger and they break the remains of dead plants and animals into nutrients that can be returned to the ecosystem. So the second decomposers continue or complete the work of the scavengers. We have here examples for scavengers and the second decomposers. We have here the vultures, hyenas, crab, cockroach, and housefly. And the decomposer we have fungi, we have bacteria, we have earthworm, and we have snail, and also we have slug. So those are the examples for scavenger and decomposer. Vultures, hyenas, crab, cockroach, house fly, and the decomposers examples fungi, bacteria, earthworm, snail, and slug. So when decomposers do their job, the nutrients back to the ecosystem in which plants, the producer, take the nutrients, then the consumer consume plants, then the decomposers again, so the cycle go on. So decomposers do their job, they make nutrients that the producer or the plants use to make their food, and then the consumer consumes the plants, the first consumer consumes the plants, and then the other consumer eats the first consumer, then the decomposer do their job again. So it's a cycle. As you know, primary five, we all have trash in our home, in our school, in everywhere. So we all have waste after using something like food rubber or a piece of paper. You might throw it into a trash bin, right? Which is taking this trash, is taken to something called landfills. This is a place that contains lots of trash and waste material with all other trash of other people take up more and more space so we have something here recycling so the only way to reduce this waste material is by recycling so what is the meaning of recycling primary five is to use or to reuse the waste material again as you know primary five when any organism dies decomposer undergo or do their job in the process of decomposition to release the neutron back to the environment or to the ecosystem so they can be used again. So this is a natural recycling. They recycle the neutrons of any organism. We have example here. The remains of animals and plants are decomposed by the decomposers and become part of the soil, the neutrons, which is used by plants to make their food or their own food. So decomposition process is considered as natural recycling factory. Decomposition process is considered as natural recycling factory. So decomposition process takes place on land and also underwater. So you can find the decomposition process on land and also underwater.
So what are scavengers primary five? Who can tell me? Super. Scavengers, they are organisms that feed on or eat dead animals and dead plants and break them down into smaller pieces. What are the decomposers? Who can tell me? Super. So, decomposers, they are organisms that complete the process of decomposition by breaking down the smaller pieces of the remain of dead animals and dead plants into nutrients that can be returned to the ecosystem again. What is the recycling? Who can tell me? Super. So, recycling is to reuse the waste material. Reusing of waste material. This was our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Goodbye.